Now that we have had an opportunity to consider the patterns in our data, we're going to reason about what those patterns mean for our two claims sent in Dr. Corey's email. To help us reason, we like to use this particular chart called a reasoning tool. And if you're familiar with Amplify, I'm sure you've seen this table before, this reasoning tool before in a past unit. Always starts with the evidence. Because as scientists, we don't just make up ideas. We consider the evidence that's available, the data that's available to us, and what that evidence means, and then connect it to an answer or to a claim. If you are working on Amplify Online, again, at the top of your screen is our lesson number and our activity, we're in activity three. So if you go there, you will see a digital version of your reasoning tool. And if you prefer to write your ideas out on paper or you don't have access to Amplify Online, I'd like you to please set up this three column chart, this three column table on your piece of paper in front of you, labeling your first column evidence, because that's where you're gonna summarize the evidence from our graph. Second column uh, with the sentence starter, this matters because, here's where you're gonna reason about what that evidence means. And then that final column stating therefore, and referring back and writing out claim one or claim two. Remember, just writing claim one or claim two is not helpful because our Econauts or our audience might not know the claims that we're talking about, so we want to actually write them out. So take a moment to pause the video, refer back to our claims and our data as needed, and complete your reasoning tool to connect evidence from the, from the graph excuse me, and a claim that it supports. So how did you do? Here is how I filled out my reasoning tool. I stated that in the evidence, I noticed that the amount of carbon dioxide in the biodome decreased from year zero to year five. And I couldn't state in our graph exactly how much it decreased because I didn't have any uh, quantitative data on that part of my graph. I didn't have any numbers, but I did know the length of time so I did include in my evidence zero to year five. So if you simply just said here that the amount of carbon dioxide decreased, please add from year zero to year five, because that is some of the quantitative data that we did get from the chart. I then reasoned that this particular pattern in our graph mattered because less carbon in the form of carbon dioxide was available for producers to make energy storage molecules during photosynthesis. And I right here referred back to one of those key ideas, those key concepts that we recorded earlier in the lesson today about how if I have less carbon from carbon dioxide, then I'm gonna get less energy storage molecules from photosynthesis. And then I said in my therefore column, that therefore a change in the amount of carbon dioxide led to a decrease in the amount of energy storage molecules made by the producers in the biodome. And according to my therefore, my claim column, I am stating that claim number one is the one that is best supported by the data. But again, notice in my reasoning tool, I didn't just write claim one, I wrote out what claim one actually is. And then even though we mentioned in our noticings of the graph earlier that sunlight and water remained the same, I did not include any of that evidence in my reasoning tool because it's not applicable to the claim um, at, that we were looking for as to why our energy storage molecules really did decrease. Now that we figured out all of this amazing stuff around photosynthesis and energy storage molecules and how to impact the amount of energy storage molecules, we are ready to answer our chapter one question that we've been working towards. And that question is, why didn't the plants and the animals in the biodome have enough energy storage molecules? We have evidence to support a claim for this, and we have key concepts that can help us reason out the answer for what that evidence means for our claims. So I would like you to pause the video and write an explanation to the Econauts 
why their plants and their animals in the biodome weren't getting enough energy storage molecules. We are in activity four online if you would like to write out your response there, or you may do so on that paper in front of you. So when checking over your work, I want you to reflect on what you wrote and some of the sentence starters that I have here to make sure that your response to our chapter one question is really thorough and really clear in helping our Econauts understand this aspect of why their biodome experiment uh, didn't work in giving their plants and their animals enough energy to survive. So did you start off with a claim around why your plants and the animals did not get enough energy storage molecules? Did you reference your model and that graph as some evidence? And then did you provide some reasoning to say uh, why this all was occurring? Great work for today. You guys really figured out a whole lot of stuff and really helped make it clear to those Econauts this aspect of their biodome. So as we reflect today on chapter one, for next time, um, go ahead and review some of these vocabulary terms because I bet you used a lot of these words in your reasoning tool and in your model from last time and in your explanation to our chapter one question for today. And we're going to continue to see these terms as we move through this matter and energy and ecosystems unit and start chapter two next time. See you then.